All right, all right 74 thing. All right, Electrified so maiden voyage. Let's pretend I'm the idiot that I am. Yeah. So key on, right? That's it. You Final that cycle. Little, you heard that little click in the click. back. So it's the relay firing up. Mm -hmm. No clutch, right? Not when you're not moving, you don't need to use the clutch, but when you're rolling, you will need to use okay. the clutch. And uh, you can just start off in second gear. Sweet. You can try first, it'll be fine. I like, I plan on it. <laughs> Already, it doesn't feel like a Volkswagen because I'm not smelling my exhaust. <laughs> So, well, let's be nice. For now, we'll start in first. Second. Just get a feel for it. And we'll turn right here. Got a nice big grab bar here. The Land Cruiser World would call that an oh shit bar. <laughs> We're not as eloquent as you DW files. So, I gotta say already, the weight balance of it feels better than stock with a little bit more weight in the nose huh we didn't do anything we haven't we're going to test it so we're going to see if we need to have you know put beefier sway bars in here or better shocks but that's uh, the i'm going to change up with the dubs right i mean it's, it's it's the most sort of commoditized platform out there as far as different rating shocks different price point shocks yeah different quality and price point of battery i mean of brakes and and everything you need huh so um head up there mm -hmm. head wherever you want <laughs> Shift. No downshift, <laughs> but that was right to go to neutral. Right? No, no, you can just leave it in third. At this point, uh, you can, I mean, you can leave it in third, you can take off in third. Uh, you don't have the downshift, you don't have to put it in neutral, you can kind of just drive it like an automatic. If we were on a hill, uh, a little bit of an incline, I might put it in second. And if you want to just chill and get the most range, is third kind of where you want to be? If you really want to get the most range, you're going to have to start to look at the the digital fuel gauge here and it's actually going to tell you how many how many amps we're drawing uh, so you'll you'll find out after a while that oh second gear on this terrain is actually using more uh, power than third gear so you can okay, switch so back and forth if you want to really geek out a... about it you can but for the most part i don't think a whole lot about it i think that's I why just... you see prius drivers driving like this all the time <laughs> is that why their heads up their ass because they're following their efficiency it could, uh, if i wanted to sacrifice Either way, I, I don't know. I'm new to this area. It's so like here, I would I would use the clutch and put it down in the second gear. So you would need, and then don't ride the clutch. That was my next question. <laughs> so don't no worry about feathering or anything. You just no, dump it, get out of it. No, that'll that'll produce a, a, a very odd sound that you've never heard before, <laughs> and uh, it'll be scary. It won't hurt anything, but it'll, you might freak out. What I always love about VW trannies and the early Porsche trannies for that matter is every shift feels like it might be your last, but it never is your last. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they, they just go and go and go, but it feels so spindly and rickety. It's definitely an acquired taste. Well, you got a brand new clutch here, brand new transmission. So how does that, how does it feel? It feels all like a Volkswagen, yeah. you know, but in a good way. It doesn't. Do how, you, how about uh, the audio input that you're getting? I mean, you do hear some of the transmission whine, and I like it because there's still enough of that visceral element. Which for me, if we had none of that, I'd feel sort of the right. disconnect. No, it's there, and yeah. that's also what I like about the transmission. There are some people that are just um, they're still using the transmission, but taking out the clutch 
basically just driving the car in third gear, but we're just missing out on all the fun. Uh, when we get to the right area, you put in first gear and see what that feels like. So what about fourth gear? Fourth gear, I really only use it on the highway. Freeway fly. And freeway speeds like 405, gnarly grade. Do you find ever having or wanting to downshift the third? Or do you, oh, no. No, no you have plenty of You get a cigarette lighter that works. Wow. Yeah, this feels great. This will be a blast. This light is the... Uh, Downshift. A little bit of fun use the clutch. Performance difference isn't extreme, it's only, and you're out of the gear so quick. I've owned, the only time I've ever used it is in a really steep parking garage, right? Or if I wanted to light up the tires. Other than that, it's completely useless. And I've seen in your videos these things will roast them. The tires, that is. And a little bit more so with the AC51. funny though, like as I play with more and more diesels, I'm learning that horsepower is irrelevant. I always try and tell clients that, like, forget about the horsepower, it's all about the torque. Now with electric, do you find, I mean, torque is still more the golden rule than what the horsepower rating would be? Yeah, and that's why we like to keep the, the stock, stock transmission, because it's just more fun taking off yeah. that all that available torque in second gear yeah. than in uh, That's part of being south of Orange County is everything looks the same and you don't know where you I, are. This is God forbid you come home <laughs> you come home drunk and you can't find your track home around here either. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this area. I don't know. I'm not a fan, but you know. Nice new clean warehouse space. Well that was good fun. I think we should take out uh, my kind of sort of stalker oil burner and mm -hmm. uh, get a feel for that and then we'll do a side by side. Okay. So here we are in the one that Icon sourced for our client. We found this in the desert. Uh, second owner, it's original paint, really nice one, 90,000 miles. The motor's been hot rodded a little bit, otherwise she's dead stock. And let's take this out and get a feel for it. Probably won't hear ourselves think. I think this motor, I'm not positive, but I think it's a 1835. What are those cars called again? Probably has a dual Delordos. Yeah, Delordos, dual. So it's a hot rod uh, by VW standards. I think this old Hurst shifter. I like it, it's groovy. We should keep that, huh? Keep it in the build. It goes with, it goes with the wheels. Yeah. So a much louder experience. It still feels good, it's fun. It smells like a VW. Yeah, it smells like a VW. It stops like a VW. Oh, you just, you still have, just, just yeah, it still I mean, has uh, the drums. drum brakes. So we're gonna get rid of those two and go disc. At least we'll go disc in the front. I think we'll be fine with drum in the rear. The thing is with, as David was explaining to us, with the electric power train, on deceleration, the regenerative braking really becomes your primary source of brake energy. But if the shit hits the fan and you need to panic stop, it's still nice to have nice four-pot discs up front versus drum. So that'll be our plan. And these cool, funky vintage wheels that came on this one are larger diameter than stock, which will allow us to fit those larger brakes. So it's just a no-brainer. Kits aren't very expensive and they add a lot of value.
Yep. Hey, I'm David. This is our 1974 thing. Shop. And uh, this car has a, we don't know yet, I think about an 80 to 100 mile range of battery pack that we uh, put in here. And uh, we, there is a way to, to, to jack that up to maybe 120. I'll talk about that later. But uh, let's just walk around the car completely stock. Uh, here we don't cut anything up in the car. There's more room up here for more batteries for a greater range, but uh, in this build, it's, we did it the same as our, our Beatles, and uh, these are the batteries. These are 180 amp hour cells, and there's 36 of them in the car, and um, we can raise that up to, I think, uh, 48 cells for a greater range, and I, I think we have enough room in here. Lose the spare tire. Here for some batteries. In the cabin, everything's very much stock. We don't have a roof on it right now because we've been uh, working on it. The only difference that we have that Jonathan will probably want to make look sexier is our little our fuel gauge here. And um, this tells us what our voltage is, how many amps we're using, how many amp hours we've used, what the percentage is. It's I really use it as a as a fuel gauge. Everything else is stocked the way that this Beetle came. We can put, um, we're gonna put an electric heater in here. That's what this wire is for. Here's the, uh, the rear battery box. This beautiful black monolith. Um, we uh, integrated speakers into the back. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a nice Alpine uh, stereo here. This is where all the fuses and relays live. We, like to completely hide all these things. This will be covered up with a, with a little box, um, so it'll be weatherproof and uh, completely hidden. And the seats will come down and cover everything up. So on the back, we have the. In this build, we have it using the AC50 motor. It's a three-phase AC induction motor. And uh, this is the controller. This is basically like the carburetor of a, of a gas powered car. It's hooked up to the throttle pedal, uh, hooked up to your foot and to the batteries, and it communicates between the, the motor, the batteries, and your foot. Uh, this likes to be cooled, so we have a small coolant system uh, that goes through these radiators here and um, just uses regular antifreeze. That's the only thing that's liquid cooled. This. Uh, this box right here is the battery onboard battery charger. This is its charge port. You just can plug this. Uh, we have a, a convenience charger with a, a plug that goes on on this side, and the other side can just go into uh, any household uh, electrical outlet. You can plug it in next to the toaster. But you can also use this to plug into public uh, chargers. It's a universal. So it's 110 or 220? 110 or 220. And you can plug it, you can have a 220 charger in your home and it will charge it twice as fast as the 110. For the most part, from zero to 100% on 220, it takes about seven to eight hours to charge this battery pack. If you put more batteries in there, it will take longer to, to charge up. And at 110? And at 110, it's twice as long. So it can take, you know, 13, 14 hours from zero. But honestly, most of the time, you're just not at zero. You're at, you're at 40%, 50%, 30%. And so you just get in the habit after a while of plugging it in at, and you're not using it. And then it's ready to go the next day. Uh, the only other thing that's back here in the little box is our DC to DC charger. And all that is for, that just charges up the 12-volt battery. Uh, that you're going to still uh, need for your lights and uh, the radio. And uh, and does that charge off of the parent EV uh -huh. system when driving? Right, right. So when the car is on, you're charging up the 12 volt battery. That's all that's going on there. All right, um, well, that's, that's a good uh, baseline, and then we're going to attack this beast. 
and our goal is to step up both performance and range at the same time and try a couple different clever icon integration ideas that we've been wanting to do since we've been friends. I've been watching Z Electric since day one and uh, really happy with what David and Bonnie have done together as a brand and they're just complete lunatics and follow their hearts and quality over everything. So we're really excited to partner with them on our thing. Stay tuned for more and see what Z Electric and Icon are cooking up with the VW Thing Derelict EV coming soon.